Welcome back to the Django Inch by Inch series. Today we'll learn about a super easy way to get a percentage from two fields in your model from within your template. No fuss, nothing hard about it, just practical and easy. Let's check it out. So let's level set by talking about what our objective is here. From within our Django template, we want to get the percentage between two numbers. These numbers are stored within your model, within your database. We don't want to have to enter that number into our model. We want Django to do the work for us. So if you look at this table here, this is what it will look like. We have a listing of how well our salespeople are doing. We have three salespeople here. We have a first name. We have a product. We have the product inventory count. Then we have the number of products that have been sold against that inventory. And what we want is we want this percentage of the products that have been sold using those two integer fields, right? Those two number fields, 100 for Joey for the first one, product sold against his inventory of 1,000. So let's see how we can do this very easily. We have a very simple model here. We have four fields, name, thing, which will turn out to be our product, count thing, which will turn out to be the number of products we have in inventory, and then count thing sold will be the number of products that that particular salesperson has sold. We have our view or the logic that will render the data from our model. We call it home. It's a function. We have numbers, which just will be the header for the HTML page. We'll throw up the string team sales. Then we have a query against our model that we just saw on the previous slide, fun stuff. We'll store that query in the variable sales. So sales equals fun stuff dot objects dot all. And then we will render that through our template and we'll see that in just one moment. All right, and here's where the magic will happen. We have an HTML table here. We're, we're using a little bit of bootstrap, but that really doesn't matter for what we're trying to get after here. So you'll see where I have the arrows. So I have a bunch of headers here. We have first name, product, product inventory, product sold, and the percent sold. All right, those first four, as we have seen, are fields that are stored in our model. Right? It's part of our database schema. Now, that last one, percent sold, is the one that we want to create or derive through our template. So if we look down here, where we'll have our values now brought back, when we do our for loop, we see 4s, our iterator s in sales. Sales was what? Our query from our view, right? So 4s in sales, and then we will bring back the different fields that we want from our database, so s.name, S dot thing right, will be the product. S dot count thing will be the number of products we have in inventory. S dot count thing sold will be the number of products each salesperson has sold. And then we have this funny looking tag with ratio. What? Then we're using S dot count thing sold, S dot count thing, and the number 100. So three data elements there. What exactly are we doing? This is how it gets rendered in our web page. So let's stare at this a minute and see if we can figure this out. Let's look at the first line, the first record that comes back. Joey's the first name, products are socks, product inventory is 1,000, and Joey sold 100 products, and we're seeing, ah, 10%. This is what we want. We want to know what percentage 100 is of 1,000. In our case, it is 10%. Same for Bill, 50 of 150%. And you can take out your calculator. 345 of 2763 is 12%. I'd like to point out we're using this with ratio tag that we're going to examine in detail on the very next slide. This automatically rounds for us. Okay, N maybe not so easy to see here, but if we were to see something very simple like somebody sold, somebody had three socks, three pairs of socks in their inventory, they sold two we would see 67% and not 66.6 or 66.66%, that type of thing. It automatically rounds for us, okay? So it does the job, but now let's get into exactly what it is, how we're using it, and how it does what it does. So with ratio is the tag we were just using in our template. Typically, it's used to calculate the height of an image or a chart but we're using it differently here. We're using it to determine the percentage of one number relative to another number. 
So there are a few different variables here. There's the this variable, this underscore value, max underscore value, and max underscore width. So Joey, if you remember our first record, Joey sold 100 socks, and in his inventory there were 1,000 socks. So we're going to use 100 as our this underscore value, which will turn out to be our numerator. 1,000 is our max underscore value, and 100 is our max width that we're using to make the percentage work. So if you look at this line here that we have in our template exactly, it's the count thing sold as our numerator, the this value. It's our count thing as our denominator, the max value, and then 100. So we wind up doing count thing sold divided by count thing, which gives us our decimal, times 100, that gives us our percentage. Simple, right? So that's how we would divide two different numbers. But we can also use this with ratio tag to multiply two numbers if you had called to do that. So let's say we want to come up with a point system for our salespeople based on the percentage of how much they sold in a given period. So here in this line, we capture our initial sales percentage as a variable called per, P-E-R. Note, we won't be rendering this to our web page from this line. Okay, we're using the as keyword, and we're just coming up with a variable to store this in to be able to use it in the next lines ahead. So in this line here, we'll render it with an R TD tag, our HTML tag here, and we'll say percent colon, and then the percent there. And then here, we will use per to multiply against the number of products we sold. So with ratio, S dot count things sold. So again, those are the numbers we sold against the inventory. And then we use the number one, why? Because we're going to be dividing by one, and any number divided by one equals itself. And then we'll use per, which of course is our percentage. Count things sold divided by one times per. So let's see what that winds up being. So here we have in our final column here, sales points, the product of those two numbers. So 1,000, 10% times 100, 1,000, 50 times 50, 2,500, and 12 times 345 is 4,140. So if there's some kind of sales system that you needed to add uh, to multiply together, you could use this with ratio to do that as well. Just again, a down and dirty way to make this happen. We'll take a look at some alternatives now. You're all familiar with template tags, built-in template tags from Django's template engine. Well, there are also custom template tags where we'd be able to write functions that we'd be able to use with the load tag to perform this very same thing. So we're really using with ratio out of license, if you will. So you can use custom template tags. I gave you the link here to check it out if you're so inclined. So with ratio and the custom template tags are things that are built into Django. They ship with Django. Now we have a package that does not ship with Django that you can do a pip install to make use of Django math filters. And this does some of the same stuff we just went through. It also does subtraction and it does a floor division and an absolute value and the modulus and addition. Check it out. I've given you the link here as well. So three viable options to help you manipulate numbers within your template, within your Django project. Okay, Django and Python family, thank you for watching till the end. If this class has helped you, consider helping me to continue to bring these classes to you and others. Helping is easy. First, subscribe to the Yogi Coder YouTube channel, and you'll see my little icon in the lower right-hand corner. All you have to do is click that right now, and you can get right to subscribe. You don't have to do anything fancy. Next, leave any comments or questions that you like, and I will do my best to try to get back to you in a timely fashion. Finally, share this video on any and all social media channels with your friends and colleagues. Until next time, when I'll have some tasty little nugget on Django and Python, I wish you happy coding. Take care.